Stugatz here. Golf is awesome, and the free 18 Birdies app makes it even awesomer. I love this. So cool. I love golf. 18 Birdies is the most complete golf app out there. It tracks all your stats and is packed with tools to improve your game, like a powerful GPS so you'll always know exact distances to the green. But 18 Birdies also rewards you just for playing golf, no matter how good or bad you are. That's because every time you score your round on the app, you can enter the 18 Birdies Dream Games Challenge, where they are giving away thousands of dollars in instant prizes like balls clubs and green fees and those aren't even the big prizes every month they are also giving away once in a lifetime golf experiences things that people like you and me would never get to do like winning one of 12 spots at the arnold palmer invitational pro-am at the world-renowned bay hill course in orlando florida imagine playing one of the best courses in the world alongside top pga pros now a little lawyer speak no purchase necessary void where prohibited restrictions apply see official rules at 18 birdies.com backslash dream games download 18 birdies today and make your phone the best club in your bag don lebertard and you're on dueling dragons you're having the time of your life all of a sudden the roller coaster goes off the rails and you die yeah was that fun well, i don't like roller coaster <laughs> well, because of the risk of dying in a roller coaster i don't right. I, I don't want to go on any roller coasters because that's one of the possibilities stugats you're eating a pasolito you yep. love pasolitos mm, this is a delicious pasolito from casavana so good and then it gets lodged in your esophagus and you choke and you die mm-hmm. was it fun was it fun yeah. it was fun while i was eating it then it stopped being fun right this is the don lebatar show with the stugats on espm radio ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Creators of the Name Your Price tool. Choose from a range of coverage options and pick the price that works for you. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Tiger Woods said Monday he is getting professional help to deal with medications used for back pain and sleep issues. Bulls guard Dwayne Wade is leaning towards picking up the $24 million player option to remain with the team next season. I would suggest to Dwayne that he stop leaning and just jump right into that thing. Jump into the $24 million because you're never going to make $24 million a year ever again for the remainder of your life. And finally, when someone tickles you, the laughter is a panic response. That's why you can't tickle yourself because your body doesn't sense any real danger. It's amazing. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Texter writes in, bleep you, Levitard, tired of the blanket police brutality statements. How about people just follow rules and laws instead of blaming police when something happened? <laughs> wow, you really think that the only time black people are getting killed is justly? You really think that? That's something that you really think? That the only time black people are killed is when it is justified? Okay, good talk. So... Stugatz looks like Paul Feinbaum in a way that is amazing. He bypassed the Jimbo Fisher and the Jeff Van Gundy, (laughs) went straight to the Gargamel, and is now at Paul Feinbaum. (laughs) It is uh, creepy. Creepy is how I would describe it. (laughs) Stugatz, this is what Stugatz would look like if he was a fugitive from justice. If (laughs) Stugatz was trying to hide from the authorities paying cash everywhere, trying not to leave a paper trail. Yes. You could walk through a crowded FBI raid. <laughs> you could we could walk through it. The, the guys with the uh what's that called? The the log, the battering ram. The guys <laughs> with the guys with the battering ram would run right past you on their way to find Stugatz <laughs> in that house if you came out of the house, knotted your tie and left as Paul Feinbaum. Right. I'm walking out and they're all rushing in, not noticing. They would that the not arrest you. For is Mike, out. am I wrong about this? If Stugatz <laughs> walked in, like if Stugatz walked by you in the street and you weren't expecting to see Stugatz, do you think that you would say, Hey, what's up, Stugatz? Or you'd walk right past him and say, I'm walking right past that sixty five year old college football expert. Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt would be able to walk out of the Kremlin with this disguise. Yes. <laughs> Do you think if I walk through an airport right now that people would ask me, like, hey, that's Paul Feinbaum? Do you think people would do that? Do you think that's a possibility? I don't think you look that much like Paul Feinbaum. Okay. I think what you look more like is not Stugat. Okay. <laughs> I, I predict that he's going to become so enamored of his new persona that he's going to make it permanent and he's going to systematically elbow his way into Paul Feinbaum's life, shove the real Paul Feinbaum out of his life and become Paul Feinbaum. I mean, 
Perhaps. Here's the problem I have. Not perhaps. You're yeah, just pivoting. Yeah, yeah. It's not perhaps. That's not what's going to happen. Why it's would you not. say perhaps? Well, there? I like to leave a glimmer of hope. And it was, use, it was a useless contribution. It was. Cody. It could happen. That, that was just long-winded, not funny. He um, said perhaps. You know I'm justifying it. Time to tickle Greg Cody oh because he just killed the show and he hates oh. tickling. Right. So let's and I was go trying on. to be nice, just keeping the show moving. I know you stuff. were. You know we'll get to it. Yeah, tickle, tickle time, time on Greg tickle Cody. Time. Here, get him. Get him. Get him. Oh. Get, get him. Yes. No armpit spots right yes. here. Yes. No armpits. Where's the spot? Where's the spot? Oh, get the spot. Oh. Okay, oh. very good. Very good. Ben. Oh. <laughs> if you want uh, to, uh, for them to stop tickling you, stop being terrible. Oh. That's all you got to do. Stop being terrible. Dan, here's the dilemma, because people on Twitter are telling me that, that I actually I happen to, to look pretty good, okay? I don't think I look good, but people on Twitter are saying I you look good. You don't look good. Make, and no I know mis- you, make no mistake about it. Okay, and I know you guys want me to uh, keep this look going until tomorrow. I, I just I can't get myself to a point where I walk into my house today and say hello to my lovely wife and my two beautiful daughters uh, with this haircut. I just can't. I can't get there. I mean, perhaps the money in my pocket will get me there a little bit quicker. Uh, but right now, as it stands, I just can't get myself to that place. And I'm not even certain there's an amount of money. And I don't appreciate it because I think Abby is doing her best to uh, to not watch today because she's mortified. I believe you just sent her a picture. I did. I texted yeah. her and you on the same text oh, string. no. $700. Sold. Where's that seven hundred dollars coming from? Who are you Your offering? Wallet. That? No, that, I'm not offering seven hundred dollars for that. Oh, well, High opening bid. No, could, what kind of negotiator are you? All right, all right, it's done. Mike Ryan, you owe him seven hundred dollars. <laughs> that seems worth it. <laughs> Good. Still got something. Paul Feinbaum tomorrow during the lie detector. All uh, it will cost you, Mike Ryan, is seven hundred dollars. Starts the bidding very high. I thought very it was seven hundred dollars from each person involved in the show. Um, so that is not a binding contract, is it? Yeah, I can't go home like this, guys. I can't. I love you, and I love this show, and I do just about anything for the show. But going home and spending a night with this haircut in my house is not something I don't think I can do it. I would love the idea of having video of you in the morning, forgetting that you did this, seeing yourself in the mirror, <laughs> and being startled, wondering why is Paul Feinbaum in my bathroom. Woof. Uh, let me ask you guys this question because something that always comes up around here. One of the reasons uh, LeBron James to me is a paradigm shifter, pioneer. Uh, a game changer beyond all the obvious reasons is he uh, tries in a salary cap sport to get power. He can only max out money. He's underpaid. And so power is something he cares about. Power is one of the reasons that he left Pat Riley. He wanted things to be under his jurisdiction, tired of working for others. He wanted to be the boss, not the employee. People object to the player having the power. They objected to his TV show that was benign on his decision. They generally object to labor having the power. They like management having the power for whatever the reasons are. So I ask you this question. What is he owed by the Cleveland Cavaliers? Because to me, it seems like such an easy courtesy to extend him. Consultation on who the general manager is, given what he has given your city and your franchise. I think for that kind of player, he is he is owed to have a voice in just about every decision that affects the team. Coaches, general manager, free agents, players, trades, all of it. For that type of player, a once-in-a-generation type Tom player. Brady doesn't have it with Belichick. Tom Brady, Belichick will send away Wes Welker and bother Tom Brady. Tom Brady is more of a guy, though, who is willing to be, um, he's willing to respect authority. He doesn't need to be the boss of things, he's actually someone who likes the structure of someone else being the boss. But totally different sports, right? Where, like, I don't want Tom Brady's opinion on which defensive end I should sign or if a linebacker is going to be good coming out of the college. But LeBron, I mean, Dan, I, think, I don't even think this is an unfair statement. You can make an argument that LeBron probably knows as much about basketball than any general manager that he's ever had. He well, knows the game but, very well. But Cody, what do you think the audience is thinking to this because I've said before that Ty Lue is an administrative assistant on that team for LeBron James, that after games, if someone needs to be punished, LeBron James should have Ty Lue run some sprints, (laughs) not Ty Lue telling LeBron James to run some sprints, that he's an administrative assistant. How high does that climb? Because 
what this feels like is Dan Gilbert just won the power struggle with LeBron James, and it doesn't seem like you should want to be doing that at this point in his contract. No, it, because if he did win, it's a Pyrrhic victory uh, because it's going to end up costing him the future. Uh, it's going to end up costing him LeBron, and it's so easy to appease uh, a player who wants power because even if you don't mean it, you you bring him in on the face of it. You say, LeBron, of course we want your opinion. We're thinking of this change. What do you think? LeBron's opinion isn't binding. You're not telling him that, that he's going to make the decision, but you're giving him the courtesy. But if, why, if only that. Like my question to you is, why wouldn't you do that? You think he's uh, leaving after this year and it doesn't matter. If Dan Gilbert thinks he's leaving after this year, regardless of what he does, regardless of who he puts even, on his team. Even if you think that, why wouldn't you do it just as a courtesy? Right. Like, as a simple courtesy, why wouldn't you go to him and ask him what he thinks of this? What's the harm? Um, do we know that he didn't ask him? Do we have any? I mean, the reports are that he wasn't consulted. I'm For now, I'm believing the reports. There will be additional reporting on this, I imagine, that will shine light on what the hell is happening here. Because this seems all curious that all of a sudden, Dan Gilbert and Griffin would have different visions of what the Cavs' future looks like. I mean, the only reason you don't go to LeBron is if you know it doesn't matter if I go to LeBron. Dan, you're asking for a reason, and I'm telling you that's the only reason. If you know he's gone despite of any well, wait, conversation no, but, you have in any move no, but, you make, no, but, then you have to run okay. your organization right, long term, not short term. If that's the way you're running your organization, though, because he has a no-trade clause, then right. you must put LeBron James on the market right now and ask him, LeBron, where are you willing to go? We need to get something for you. If that's the way you're running your franchise, if you're saying you know that he's going either way, then you have to right now start trading. You got to go. To, the, the thing that you got to consult LeBron on is LeBron, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go this year so that I can trade you? And that's interesting. I would actually consider that if I'm Dan Gilbert and I think he's leaving after next year and I'd be interested, like LeBron. Imagine that. Imagine that conversation. I can send you to any team in the NBA, maybe not Golden State, but any team to the NBA for one year, and then you figure out what you want to do after that. And I wonder which team LeBron would choose. You but, know? but with a no-trade clause, he's not about making his final destination weaker by having them trade assets for him. He can tough it out one year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's unusual that he has a no-trade clause. There are not many people in the history of the league who have one of those. A guy writes in, is Gilbert tired of deferring to LeBron, though? He's going into his 15th year. Man, Gilbert's never done anything without LeBron other than not re-sign any of his general managers. Like, that is a mismanagement fiasco. The fact that LeBron has covered up all of the incompetence of that franchise is yet another breathtaking thing to add to his legacy. That franchise is a wall-to-wall joke and just got rid of the only thing in their organization that represented stability in the front office treated griffin and the people that worked with griffin who are apparently talented and said no to other offers out there treated him really unfairly because he was in the mix for other jobs and he just kept them on the line and right be- and now all those jobs are gone and his contract set to expire very high on the list of lebron james legacy achievements is that it didn't matter that he played for a group of incompetents. Right. Like ver- that he won a championship yes. with an organization that structurally is as broken as any you've ever seen in sport. And this is proof more of that as they fire the only guy that had any respect in their front office because everyone knows Ty Lue's a puppet there. Hey, these stats are not going to read themselves. You could ask the same question about Riley and Harrison, right? Why didn't they do? Why didn't they have these discussions with LeBron and give him everything that he wanted to stay in Well, Miami? but they said they did on Mike Miller, which is the only one right. that allegedly he but had you, a problem with. But you said there was a power struggle at the end there, and Pat Riley well, was Riley's always that power. Well, but Riley's always going to be in charge of his organization. Right. At least Riley's earned it. What yes. has Dan Gilbert done to earn it other than have a guy born near <laughs> his, his arena? <laughs> Nothing. Well, LeBron was asking for small stuff, though, right? He was asking for some of his entourage to be allowed in the in the locker room and stuff like that. It wasn't that small. It was bigger stuff than that. But regardless, if Riley's in charge of your team, he's in charge of your team. There's not any player in charge of your team when Riley's in charge of your team. But the only one with pedigree in that organization is LeBron James, one-man dynasty. As much as I love Pat, though, I'd rather have LeBron than Pat. That's fine. Yep. And you, But at least he's earned it.
At least Pat Riley has earned it. All all Dan Gilbert did to get LeBron James back. These are Dan Gilbert's basketball achievements. (laughs) Had a guy born near his arena, (laughs) ran him off, and then got him back only because of how many lottery picks he had from how poorly he managed the entire thing while he was gone. (laughs) Don Lebatard. You and I probably define fat slightly differently. I'm someone who sees myself uh, naked on the regular, and I don't consider myself fat. Most would. Still guts. You think most people would consider me fat? That oh, they yeah. Would, yeah. <laughs> people are very judgmental. Most people would consider me fat as well. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stu Gats on ESPN Radio. Texture writes in here, and people always get upset when I take a bat to some of their traditional constructs. Dan, how does having a physical gift for basketball entitle LeBron to be above everyone else on a side where he more than likely isn't educated enough to be doing the delegating and the job it takes to be a GM? (laughs) What makes Chauncey Billups more qualified being the Cavs GM than LeBron James? Somebody tell me. (laughs) Anyone? Nothing. Nothing. What makes Chauncey Billups the the front runner candidate to be the general manager of the Cavs? I'm telling you, if I was trying to please LeBron right now, if I actually thought it was something that he wanted, I would make the announcement that LeBron James is my general manager player. Yeah, then right. If it I, weren't against the cap, I'm sure there are cap ramifications. Right. I that. mean, if I could do it, if there weren't all sorts of obstacles, I would just do it like player coach situation. LeBron wants to be the GM. Fine. For one year, you could be the GM. Let's see what happens. When he left Cleveland and chose to come down here, we were saying before he made his decision that if he went to Pat Riley and said, hey, I want Maverick Carter to be the head coach. That if we're Riley, we fire Eric Spolstra and make Maverick Carter that coach. A lot of people would find that ridiculous on its face, but you do understand that's what they did with their coach. Yeah. Like, you understand that they just hired the guy who would help LeBron. Ty Lue didn't have any experience as a head coach. He's recently out of the league. What makes Ty Lue and Chauncey Billups? These are just your constructs in your head. Guy's been out of the sport for a little while. Therefore, he's more qualified to be the general manager of the team. Was that person making the argument that LeBron isn't smart enough to be a general manager in basketball? He's like the most brilliant basketball mind of our generation. Well, he's talking about schooling, I think, when he says education. And he didn't graduate from uh, he didn't graduate from college. Didn't even go to college. But I don't think that has anything to do with why it is. Chauncey Billups would be any more qualified for that job. When, or Vladi Divac or and, and, you know, Magic Johnson, any of these guys. Right. I mean, Steve Kerr had no head coaching experience. <laughs> when LeBron came to Miami, one of the first things Spolstra absolutely raved about was LeBron's basketball IQ, the idea that it's more than just talent and skill with LeBron. He knows the entirety of, of what he's doing, of the profession he's in, and the idea that he wouldn't have a qualified opinion on whether or not to – to fire the general manager or what this guy brings to the program is ridiculous. And here's the other thing that's kind of, it's been bothering me since it happened. Why are we making such a big deal about David Griffin as if he's any good? Do we actually know if he's any good? He's just a guy who inherited LeBron James, and whoever gets LeBron James is going to be viewed as good. He was also part of the group. He was VP of operations. He was not GM. That took Anthony Bennett in a draft that had the Greek freak and had Rudy Gobert, and had C.J. McCollum. Yeah, but you're going to make mistakes on that front. David Griffin is widely respected in the field by other people who have more information than we do. It was impressive that he was able to pull off a move when no one in the league is really uh, in a hurry to help you out. Like the J.R. Smith, Iman Shumpert, Mozgov moves, those are big moves. Like whenever Pat Riley added to the, the Miami Heat teams, it was always with someone that was waived or with a free agent in like Shane Battier or Ray Allen who was ring chasing. It was never the big acquisition midseason. They're really limited in their ability to get Kyle Korver, their ability to get J.R. Smith and Shumpert. They surrounded him with shooters and they changed the way that they played basketball in the middle of the experience based on that change of we're going to become a three-point shooting team and we're going to see if we can beat Golden State by being better than Golden State at Golden State style of basketball. And, you know, one year they were too injured to do it. Another year they won. And now they're one and one in those situations because I don't even count the first year if you're going into that who was their best player that first year? Is Kyrie? Who was their second best player when Kyrie Irving and in, in those finals and Kevin Love was in, off and LeBron it was, was Delavadova? Dela <laughs> yeah, who literally put it all on the court. He was getting IVs after <laughs> Delavadova. Right. I mean, so hey, I know I, it's laughing. It's but, true. But, but let me, but, I know. But I'm let me. But it. beyond that, let me address what this guy is saying. 
Dan, how does having a physical gift for basketball entitle LeBron to be above everyone else on the side where he's more than likely not educated enough to do the delegating and all the other job that are required of a general manager? What LeBron has is what you have to have almost always to accrue power, and it's uncommon value. He makes any team a playoff team anywhere that he goes. He fixes all of your mismanagement. Them holding up the title last year is proof positive that he will fix everything that's wrong with your organization upon arrival. That value usually comes with whatever power you want if you're a CEO. If you're someone who can do that, hell, look at Jerry West. Jerry West, they're fighting over him. Golden State and the Clippers, and the Clippers got him. Ballmer got him because value. And Jerry West isn't nearly as valuable as LeBron James. LeBron James is far and away the most valuable thing in that sport. He will raise your city's economy. He will help your uh, he will help your franchise value. Mm-hmm. He is far and away. I don't even know who would be second. Who would be second on most valuable person in the NBA? Steph Curry or Durant? I mean, Curry can't move shoes. No. LeBron moves everything. Like, I don't even know who would be close in terms of a close second place. If I opened up the free market and said, here, you can all bid on the value. Let's auction it off among the owners. LeBron would be worth so much more than everyone else in that sport. Second place would be a distant, distant second. And LeBron fills arenas as well in a way that most fans or most players don't. Maybe Kevin Durant. Maybe if Kevin Durant went to any other team than Golden State, he would have filled arenas. And not, I'm not I'm not saying to the level that LeBron did, but maybe if Kevin Durant went to Washington, don't you think that the surrounding area would be more profitable than it yeah, is now? Yeah, but not like this. Not like where your franchise goes up by $500 million right. the moment that he announces that he's coming to your team. To find us on a station near you, visit ESPN.com slash ESPN Radio and click the station locator tab. Don Lebertard. 2,512 packs of beer would weigh roughly 24,500 pounds. So that's 12 tons of beer. Stugats. So where does Dirk Nowitzki put that? Right in his belly. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We've got a Greg Cody back in my day that we're going to get to here in minutes. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski of Yahoo Sports is reporting that Phil Jackson is willing to trade, listen to offers on Porzingis. Oh, God. I mean, why is... I? You know what? Why is Phil Jackson still running this organization? Why? Someone explain to me, James Dolan, come on this radio show and explain to a lifelong Knicks fan who has spent his hard-earned money supporting this team, actually spent my dad's hard-earned money supporting this team, come explain to me why Phil Jackson is running your organization. Please, do me a favor. Explain it to me. Explain it to Nick fans, because Nick fans are very loyal. We've been waiting a long time for this team to be good, and Phil Jackson is not the answer. He's not. Someone explain to me why we're shopping Porzingis, why we signed Carmelo Anthony to that ridiculous deal in the first place. What is Phil Jackson doing? Other than having Michael Jordan and having Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, what has Phil Jackson ever done? And Phil Jackson didn't win those championships. Michael Jordan won the championship. So did Scotty Pippen. So did Dennis Rodman. So did Horace Grant. So did Steve Kerr. So did B.J. Armstrong. You know who didn't win a single thing? Phil Jackson. And the second he realized he wasn't going to win any longer in Chicago, what did he do? Oh, there's a nice landing spot. There's Shaq and there's Kobe. Phil, you didn't win there either. Kobe won. Shaq won. You didn't win a thing. Why is he running this organization? And why are we taking offers on Christoph Porzingis? He's 21 years old. A seven-footer who could do ridiculous things that I've never seen a seven-footer do, except for Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> I mean, the Knicks need the death penalty. That's it. <laughs> I mean, if they were a college football team, someone should serve them up the death penalty. I'm sorry, Phil, please. What I was going to say before we started this segment is that we have to figure out over the next hour and a half how to get Stugatz lathered up so that he gives one of these very strong opinions that ends up going viral at ESPN and there will be no explanation of why it is that he looks like Paul Feinbaum. 
It'll be contextless as he rails against Phil Jackson. So the next hour and a half of this show needs to be spent just giving ESPN content from Stugatz that can be circulated on all platforms with him looking like Paul Feinbaum and there being no mention that he looks like Paul Feinbaum. And here's another beauty. I mean, Phil Jackson. James Dolan, come on this radio show and explain it to me. Why is Phil Jackson I mean, still on the job? The ex- no, no. Here's another beauty. Here's another ju- uh, Dan, give me a second because this is a beauty. Chris Paul. If not for the way that Phil Jackson has treated Carmelo Anthony over the years, Chris Paul's very good friend, Chris Paul actually would have considered signing with the Knicks this offseason if Phil Jackson had treated Carmelo Anthony the proper way. And he did it. And because of that, we now have no shot at Chris Paul. So what do we do? We are going to trade trade offers for the one asset that we have. Why? Why is he running a basketball organization? Why? What makes him qualified? What has he ever done besides coach good players? 11 championships. I, Dan, he didn't win any of the 11 championships. I mean, someone was going to win six with Jordan, and someone was going to win three with Shaq and Kobe, and it just happened to be Phil. It's ridiculous. Uh, James Dolan, if you're listening to me, if you listen to the show, if you can hear me, I'm a lifelong Knicks fan. My entire family, we are lifelong Knicks fans. We love the organization. New York loves, loves the New York Knicks. It is a basketball town at its core. Not football, not baseball. What New York is, is a basketball town. And I am demanding, James Dolan, I am demanding that you fire Phil Jackson today. Today. Today, you owe it to Knicks fans. You owe it to Knicks fans. The, ex- the explanation you keep seeking from James Dolan himself is, I hired Phil Jackson, the guy you all wanted to be running this franchise, and I promised that he would get to serve the length of his contract so that I can't be blamed for interfering without interference. That is why Phil Jackson is running your franchise. He shouldn't be running the franchise. You mentioned he never should. uh, Dan, I'm telling you, he never should have been hired in the first place. And James Dolan should be ashamed of himself. He really (laughs) should because he's not qualified to do this. I'm telling you, he's not qualified. He is. I'd rather have LeBron James as the guy running basketball operations for the New York Knicks than Phil Jackson. I'd rather have anyone. I'd rather. In fact, what he should do is fire him today and hire this David Griffin character that was let go by the Cavaliers. Make him the general manager. That should be the next move by James Dolan and the Knicks. Seriously. (laughs) I mean, maybe LeBron likes Griffin enough where maybe he'll follow him to New York, the Mecca. Texter's writing in here. We're getting a lot of this whenever we talk about LeBron. A lot of this. At what point will you be done with the LeBron bleepity bleep licking bleepity bleep? Do you think anybody outside of Cleveland wants to listen to this? I will be done with the LeBron bleepity bleep licking bleepity in a couple of months. Okay. And then I'll start it again when the season starts. Right. So I'll take a couple of months sabbatical <laughs> from that because Dan, hey Dan, wipe those juices. Uh, be, 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 be. Getting a lot of that. Yeah, he is the transcendent athlete of our time. If you do not like talking about the transcendent athlete of our time, we're not the show for you. <laughs> We can talk about the run that the Rockies are on lately, I guess. Real tear. <laughs> Twins and Brewer offensive baseball. Yeah, Astros turning it around. Rockies playing well, man. Mike is on it. No, seriously. I mean, they've won five straight, seven of ten, plus 75. And this Blackman guy, he can rake. He's good. Listen, it's been a long time. It's been since the days of Vinny Castilla and Todd Helton and Larry Walker since the Rockies have been this exciting and maybe uh, the most exciting team in baseball. I have 46 and 26. No one expected this. They got cargo. I, the best move they ever made, and I said at the time, was getting rid of Tulo because that guy's a disaster. Whatever team Tulo goes on, they're not very good. And you notice, since they've gotten rid of Tulowitzki, the Rockies have become good again. Oh, they have. Can't name a single player after Cargo and Blackman. Not one pitcher on the staff. But that's why they're so good. I mean, they have a bunch of nameless guys that you don't know about, you never heard of, and here they are, 46-26, and best team in the National League. Are they better than the Nationals? Are you okay? okay? Are you running out of breath? Because you are just... This tie is really tight on me, and the collar is choking me. And the last time I wore this uh, was at my daughter's bat mitzvah, and I'm telling you... I must have gained 50 pounds since then. Uh, well, <laughs> and the, it was a month and a half ago. The, the haircut did add 30 pounds in 30 years. Right. Uh, Guillermo, can you put it on the poll, please? What does Stugatz look most like? Paul Feinbaum, Jeff Van Gundy, Gargamel, 
Dick Vitale, Danny DeVito. <laughs> At Levitard Show, what does Stugatz look most like? What other options are there? Jeff Van Gundy, Dick Vitale, what a Gargamel, what I, others? I mean, I what got a, 40 pounds on Van Gundy, man. What others? What other options are there? Those are good ones. That's perfect. All right. Good contribution, Cody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, he hasn't oh, given oh, us buddy. anything in the last two hours. You look nothing. good. When you back no, that, no, that I up. mean, Cody's given us nothing for two hours. Nothing. Don Lebatard. Who's the second most famous Frank? Frankenstein. Stugatz. Pretty good. It's also not his name. Frank. Yeah, nobody and calls Frankenstein Stein. Frank. His yes, friends do. do. Of course yes. his friends do. <laughs> yeah, Dracula right. calls him Frankie. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Time now for Greg Cody's Back in My Day. We wanted to do it last segment, but Stugatz became a rodeo bull of hot takes. <laughs> Fix the collar on your jacket, please. Stu got so you could look more like Paul Feinbaum. Sorry. would never pop up his collar. Let's go ahead and do uh, Greg Cody's Back in My Day. And now it is time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guy, Greg Cody, with Back in My Day. Privileged pets. We pamper and spoil our animals to an embarrassing degree. This is a generality, not a blanket indictment, but you know who you are. You dress your dog in a cardigan sweater, give the cat food that costs three times as much as other brands for no evident reason. You hire pet sitters and dog walkers. You spend big on pet spas and pay big bucks for unnecessary grooming. You take Fido to a restaurant with you, uncaring or wildly oblivious that other diners really wish you hadn't. Look, I'm a pet lover. Don't get me wrong. I love my dog and will grow to love the two-month-old kitten we just brought home, Greg Cody Jr. Both are rescue animals. So we're pet people. But here's the thing. Your pets aren't asking to be spoiled. That's all on you. You can spend $2,699 to buy your canine an elaborate backyard dog park. But you know what'll make him... Every bit as happy, a pat on the head, and an attaboy. I throw a who's good at my dog, and her tail is a blur as she grins like a donkey eating briars. Who's good? That's the way it used to be back in my day. The hierarchy was undisturbed. We were superior to our pets and knew it. We lorded over them, and we weren't afraid or too politically correct to admit it. See, I outrank my pets, and they know it. They are not my equal. They don't have jobs or pay rent. They can't even use a toilet. They sit around all day napping, licking their... Awaiting my next who's good and calling that a great day. I had a weird dream the other night in which I was taking a crap in my backyard while my dog stood upright over the grill, flipping ribeyes with tongs. Unless that actually happens... Let's not mistake what's what and who's boss. I'm Greg Cody, yeah. and that's how it was back in my day. Yeah. <laughs> who's good? 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 Uh, good. Who's good? <laughs> He's right, though. Again, the dog, the dog can't tell any difference it's between between the three thousand dollar massage weekend at the spa and a. Uh, and a who's good? It's all. It's, it's all, all. It's all the need. same. It's all they need. Who's good? <laughs> who's my Riley? <laughs> good. Who's good? All right. So excellent work <laughs> by Greg Very Cody, good. reminding all that yes. he sits atop his pet in the yes. food chain. Yes. Thank you. And uh, I, I, I don't feel like there are that many people over spoiling their animals. Do you? Hmm. Oh, You'd be I think. Surprised. Yeah, I think people yeah. do that all the time. Yes. Like, you think there are a lot of people who are spending thousands of dollars in the upkeep of their animal? Yes. Like, just with daily sort of comforts? Put that on the poll, Guillermo. What's the question? Do you think the majority of pet owners? What's the question? Do you think hmm. the majority of pet owners. Um, do most people spoil their pets? I think would be a generic. Okay. Crazy Do most one. people spoil yeah. their pets with thousands of dollars? I mean, there are different ways of spoiling your pet, but right. there are many people who do do it with thousands of dollars. I mean, I just give my sure. dog a treat anytime it acts up, like nonstop. I give the dog treats nonstop. 
I'd like to be a dog, man. It seems like such a great lifestyle. It does, doesn't it? You sleep all day. You wait for everyone to come home. They rub your belly. They take you for a walk, and they just throw treats at you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're kind of this show's pet, though, aren't you? Kind of. I mean, look at you today. Who's good? I mean, who's good? good. We grooms to God. Who's Who's good? good. Who's Who's good? good. Who's good? In what other ways are you a pet? (laughs) Who's good? Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitar Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stu Gatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the GEICO app. Thank you.